Hej, hej, hej. Inside the NBA, presented by Kia. Live from Studio J in Atlanta. Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Charles Barkley. And, and Kenny's in a bad mood. Why are you in a bad mood, Kenny? Well, I just, I'm, I'm not really happy with the type of effort that I watched basketball-wise. Yeah. So then I'm watching games that I didn't really want to watch then. All right. Well, then they're going to keep me here. Muddle through it here. Keep me here. Muddle through it here for the next. Didn't Jason Terry uh, guarantee a win? Yes, he did. As a matter of fact, he said it was going to be a long flight back to Houston for it Golden is. State. A long flight back to Houston. Yeah. Yeah, but they're going to have to go back there for Game Six, but they're not. No, they're going to have to go to Game Three tomorrow night, for next year's season. Hawks and Celtics tomorrow night, the only game in town, and you'll see it here on TNT. Oh, oh now you're going to show the highlights. Oh, just hey. If you're just tuning in, well, first of all, they've been, Steve they've been coach of the year, and there he is with Luke Walton and Bob Myers, and there's Steph who can't go with the sprained right. So I know the Rockets got a chance now. No oh, this, this is definitely no Steph Curry. They're gonna. Oh, this is right. James up, Harden right scored up alley. Oh. 18 of the Rockets' 20 points. They gotta in the be first excited. Quarter. They gotta be excited. excited they gotta, man. Oh. No Steph Curry. These oh. Rockets. I agree with you, JT. Come on, we gonna help guarantee a win. Come on, kid. Help me out. They lost by 30. You gotta do it. No, no, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We're not there yet. Because right now, we, we, I mean, you gotta win. Oh, Raymond Green with the block on Michael Beasley and the white shirts back the other way. Yeah, way to hustle back. Brandon Rush. Oh, Kenny. Fourth for Oh, my God. Second half. Check. 48. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I, oh, let me tell you something. Sean Livingston. Steve Kerr won coach of the year. I think it was Kevin McHale should have won coach think, of the I year. Think, <laughs> I think this is when the music is going to start for, for the chat. Yeah, Kevin McHale. Because there was Green on Green uh, wall to wall. Uh, hey, <laughs> 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 Ralph Samson rolling over in his grave. <laughs> Mario <laughs> Ellie rolling over in his grave. <laughs> Bernard Maxwell rolling over in his grave. Kenny <laughs> Smith rolling over in his grave. Don't ever say Clutch City in this sentence again. <laughs> oh, hey, Thompson. <laughs> A half caught by Curly Neal. Oh, my goodness. Curly Neal with the half court oh. shot. Wow. Here comes the bucket of water, ladies and gentlemen. The pail with the water oh, inside of it. Oh, it's confetti. Oh, I thought it was a real thing. 114 oh. to 81, Golden State <laughs> closes out the Houston Rockets. And since uh, since Steph went down with the right knee sprain, they outscored the Rockets by 60. That's ridiculous, Ernie. <laughs> Come on, man. 114-81. Six, six, oh. Here's uh, oh, J.B. Oh, Dickerstaff. Man. Got me crying. <laughs> J.B., some thoughts about what, after what happened out there? Um... To me, this isn't about one game. Right? To me, this is about the opportunities that we've had the entire year uh, that forced it to come down to this game, that forced it to come down to us being the eighth seed. Um, for me and for all of us, you know, I hope this was a learning experience. Uh, the importance of seizing every opportunity that you're given the opportunity of taking full of every uh, full advantage of every situation that you're in. Um, you know, these years in the NBA are priceless, and these years in the NBA aren't guaranteed to anybody. So when you're in these moments, you have to take full advantage of these moments. And unfortunately, we didn't do enough of that this year, and that put us in the eighth seed and put us in a very difficult position uh, to play against. You know the best team in the history of basketball. Um, so for me, that's the bigger picture, that we learn our lessons. 114 to 81, the final score. I'll, I'll leave it up to you. You want to you wanna put a period on the Rockets season now or talk about Golden State now, because we're going to do both. I'm not saying anything about the Rockets. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about guys learning their lessons. All those jokes you had when the cameras were off. I'm no, you ain't going to say nothing. Go. I'm not oh. saying anything about the Rockets. I apologize to Daryl Morey, yeah. Tad. And no, no, that was doing the, what happened tonight, man. Talk about yeah, it. Uh, Kenny, that was... Embarrassing. Embarrassing. I mean, that team plays with no energy and no passion. You would think, you look at, you know, Ernie put the stat out earlier. 
from the time that Steph Curry had gotten hurt, you think it would energize them? Because they were tired the other day uh, at halftime, end up losing that game by over 20, and to come out tonight and lose by 30, that tells me that team. And I don't ever. They, they got no passion whatsoever, man. I mean, they just go through the motions, and that's the one thing you can't do in pro sports, just go through the motions. You can get beat by a better team, but if you just go through the motions, you're going to get humiliated, especially by the team the way the Warriors play. And that sounds like what JB was saying in essence, too, is like th these are valuable times. These are precious times. You're in the NBA. You've got opportunities like this, and you've got to embrace them, and they, they did not do that at do all. all. They didn't do it at all. You know, JB made some correct statements. I think they're definitely going to have to break this team up. Definitely going to have to break this team up. This team all year long has not had an identity. Uh, they don't play together. Uh, they don't come out and play hard enough. Uh, they didn't stick up for each other. You know, a lot of people talk about the other day when James Harden hit, 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 hit the big shot and you looked at the bench. Yeah. That told me a lot about that team. You know, a lot of people come back and say, well, it was nothing. Blah, blah, blah. But that, that right there told me a lot about the team. You look at Golden State, you got a guy who hasn't played a lot. He comes, he hits a shot in the corner. Everybody on the bench, Steph's going crazy. And teams like that always advance and do well. But, you know, Coach Bickerstaff was right. They didn't, mm -hmm. they didn't seize many opportunities. But tonight, they, they didn't bring it. You know, Charles make a great point. Steph is down. We have a chance to come back and win. We didn't play hard to, you know, b get blown out by 30. We call it a, a goal for our early. G-O-F-A-W. You know, and, and, and I feel bad. Fashion. <laughs> Where, I, feel, yeah. I, I feel bad for young Mr. Bickerstaff because... He's been in the league long. His dad was a hell of a coach, known him forever. This kid takes over a team. He's got a chance to, you know, get a, a real contract out of this situation. If they have a great year and go make win a couple rounds, you know, he, you don't ever know when you're going to get an opportunity to be a head coach again. Yeah. And But this has zero reflection upon him. This team, they, they don't like each other. At all. You could just tell... Yep. You know, and, and I've been on good teams and bad teams, but this team, their body language, they're not happy for each other. Oh, it looks like just like five guys playing basketball. Yeah. Street yeah. Like well, well, like. the, the word that I always come up with is engagement. And when you're engaged into a situation, you pay attention to all of the details. So even, even to the real, you know, the sense of the word that everyone talks about, you know, you, you, you get, you're about to get married and it's an engagement. So you start paying attention to the details of what, the other person needs and wants and going to have. But when you're doing, not doing that as a basketball team, you have these moments because you're not paying attention to the details of, of the, uh, the scouting report, the needs, the wants of your other teammates. And it's obvious, you know, you could say it's hard to measure someone's passion or their, eff or their, or their heart, but you can measure their effort and their engagement by film. Yeah. And by looking at that, there was no engagement and no passion to help. You know what it reminds me of? My, the first year I got to Phoenix, uh, we made it to the finals. We lost to the Bulls. And I remember when the next season started, I knew, I, I was telling my friends, I said, I don't think we're going to make it back to the finals. Because that first year in Phoenix, nobody complained about playing time. Nobody complained about who made salary and things like that. So... Um, we just wanted to win. Everybody was happy for each other. That second year in Phoenix, guys started complaining about, like, well, I should be getting more playing time. I should be making more money than that guy. And we weren't happy for each other. We lost to the Rockets twice. We said y'all wasn't going to win either. Yeah. But, that's but you know, we, you could just tell we were not happy for each other like that first year we played together. Mm. Meantime, on the Golden State side, uh, they advanced to the Western Conference semifinals. They will play either the Portland Trailblazers or the Clippers. They swept the Clips, and you know the situation LA's in now. And Portland was able to win one out of the four, and uh, that one was the night uh, Damian Lillard went for 51. He, he could get it again without without uh, Steph out there, because he goes at him hard. So uh, I'd actually like to see Portland win that series, because that'll be a much better matchup. You know, because they, they sweep the Clippers without Chris Paul and Blake. But with them guards they got in Portland, that would be a very entertaining series. When we come back, no Chris Paul, no Blake Griffin. No chance. Clippers in a huge game five with the Blazers, which came down to the fourth quarter. We'll be back.
Inside the NBA, presented by Kia, is brought to you by Kia, official automotive partner of the NBA. The NBA app is the best way to stay up to date on scores, stats, and breaking news. Download it now and get an all-access look into all things playoffs. Now, the loss of their one-two punch was a punch to the collective gut of the L.A. Clippers. Blake Griffin out for the rest of the postseason. Chris Paul out indefinitely with a broken right hand. But the Clippers still owned the home court advantage in a 2-2 series with the Blazers heading into Game 5 at Staples Center. And in L.A., Chris Paul, innocent bystander, Damian Lillard to Mo Harkless for the early three. Portland jumps out to the 12-5 lead, but it was an 18-18 game after one. Austin oh, Rivers, guys. Wait. Clippers competed tonight, Ernie. That was a, they ever. That's a perfect example of difference oh. between them and the Houston Rockets. Who he played for? They not win this game, but they really competed. Take your hat off to Doc Rivers and his team tonight. Jeff Green. Uh, it was thought he might be in the starting lineup, but he came off the bench. I wish you did this every night, Chuck. Dude, that guy drives me crazy. I thought he was a your all-star, Jeff Green. Clippers, oh, step back. Clippers 50 to 45 at the half. And then Lillard, who didn't score or didn't have a field goal in the first half, connected. And McCollum did too, part of a 10 nothing run to start the third quarter. Blazers knew they needed this game tonight. They want to get this over quick. Oh! oh DeAndre like Jordan goes Whoa. up high. But they didn't have any field goals the first 536 of the LB third game. quarter. Yeah. Oof. Jeff Green That's for the three. Nine-nothing run to end the third. Game tied at 71 going to the fourth. It was 74 all. Oh, my goodness. When oh. Portland went 16-3 oh. to three on him. And mm. Lillard Give started finding the range. Mm. Tell you what, boy. Damian Lillard, he... 16 of his 22 in the fourth quarter. Tell you wow. what, he sees some limo guys out there. What's the limo guy, Chuck? Guys, you want to make sure you get to the gym. You want them getting caught in traffic or have no accidents. And you're going to beat them like a dog when you see them. Alan Crabb, well put. Alan Crabb for three. <laughs> and then Dame oh. Dalla. Yeah, you don't want them guys to get stuck in traffic. You make sure they get there. You send oh, you send the limo. Oh, I get yeah. it. I got yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Blazers pull away in the fourth quarter. 37-27. In that final period, 108-98 is the final. They lead the series three games to two. Let's hear from uh, Doc Rivers. Doc, um, in, in terms of competitive spirit, what did you think of your team tonight? Oh, I thought we were extremely competitive. I, I actually thought um, the way we played in the first half was great. I thought we came out in the third quarter, and it was, you know, it's similar to whatever someone said that game six in Oklahoma. Uh, our energy was flat. Like they turned their energy up the beginning of the third, and we were exhausted. I had to call two timeouts. You can just see it, and that's that's not conditioning. That was emotion, you know. Um, and you know it was tough. Like we did make a run and got back in, but now we're you know climbing back with a good team. So uh, I like um, a lot of the things we did tonight. Uh, I thought we lost our spirit a little bit in one stretch uh, when they started making just great shots, which we could live with. But I just thought it was our endurance early in the third, that stretch. They got back in the game. I thought that hurt us. And then uh, the beginning of the fourth, they did it again. Um, so I liked it overall. In terms of just generating offense without Blake and Chris, is that why? Did you just tell Jamal, just keep shooting and go as much yeah, as you can? Yeah, yeah. I mean, him, uh, J.J., Austin, you know, the problem was you can see that one stretch, Jamal and Austin were exhausted, and they were stuck with the ball a bunch. And, you know, you know it, it's it's tough, but um, you know we can generate more. I mean, heck, hell, we scored more tonight than we scored the two games in Portland. So, uh, with the code stretches that we had, so uh, and honestly, I thought Jamal missed great shots at the one stretch, so he'll make more of those. Things were somewhat bleak when you left here after two games, and you've kind of completely turned the series around. What, what's the feeling now that you are on the verge of possibly clinching it? Uh, it's it's a great feeling, but um, even after after the first two games here, I said that you know the series changes every game. Uh, after game three, we felt really good going into game four at home again. We played well, um, and then we played really well again. And um, unfortunately, they had some injuries that you know completely changed their team. Uh, so it, like I said, it changes every game. We had a good game tonight. We finished it, um, and they could. They got a good enough team to do the same thing to us. So, um, you know, we got to just continue to 
uh, get better at the things that we've done well in this series that's, that's given us a chance to win these games. Hennessy never stop, never settle. Fourth quarter, a 37-point outburst by the Portland Trailblazers, in which they shoot 57% and hit half their threes, and Lillard scores 16 of his 22. So they're a win away from advancing to the conference semifinals. If you're Doc Rivers now, Charles, and tonight you started Jamal Crawford and, and Paul Pierce along with Austin Rivers, do you alter who you start next game? I would change. Number one, I would... I I didn't think he should have started Jamal because Jamal, he shoots. He's 6 for 23. I think he's better coming off the bench because that's too many shots for a guy who's a streak shooter like that. I would have started Jeff Green, my personal opinion. Uh, that, that's what I would have did because I think Jeff Green will be more... Uh, he he going to get... He's a better scorer. Uh, J Jamal takes so many tough shots. That's just, we, we have the same philosophy on Jamal we have on J.R. Smith. They can really score, but they take so many tough shots. You can't survive taking tough shots, Ernie. You just can't survive taking tough shots. But I want to make this. I'm changing my rankings. You know, I love Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan, but they're going to drop. So Lillard and McCollum moving up. They're going to be the best, the second best two guard, the guard combination in the NBA uh, because they have been consistent all year. They're really stepping up in the playoffs. And the one thing we always talk about, your stars have to play well in the playoffs. And Lillard and McCollum, they have been fantastic. No disrespect to my man Kyle Lowry. Love him and DeMar, but that backcourt in Portland, they're the second best backcourt in NBA, in my opinion. You asked me yesterday, Ernie, what, what did I think of the Clippers' chances, and I told you I need to see them play tonight. And Doc said they were emotionally drained. I didn't know how they were going to react after the bad news, but I actually saw that in the game. They were kind of tired. They were emotionally drained. Now, does this take all the air out of the wrath now, or do they try to pick it back up and try to force a game seven? We shall see. I mean, but they really, really competed tonight other than that other game we just saw. Yeah, the four out, one in didn't work. Four guards out with DeAndre, one guy in. You know, they didn't have a conventional lineup. They tried to make... I think Portland addressed just to something that they might not have seen and been ready for. Uh, but, you know, their small lineup, that just allows McCullum and, and Dillard to have, basically, if you pull DeAndre away, away from the rim, there's no size there. And they took advantage of drives. They took advantage of pick and rolls. And they don't uh, start on attack. They stay on attack. They, they are on it from, from the door. There is, they have, they're right now, they're on the plane, they're in attack mode. Those two guards do not let you stay off of your heels, and that's what's the difference. Yeah, and plus, like I say, the, the Clippers, they got them limo guys, so those guys always on attack, and then when they have a... a on a, they're on attack when it ain't like, a limo no, no, guy. No, no, but I'm saying... Even when it's not. No, but I'm saying they're always on attack, right. but then when they see limo guys, oh, yeah. they really go crazy. They will try to uh, wrap things up Friday night. Back at home, Moda Center in Portland. Still to come on Inside, another pivotal game five in the East. Hornets and Heat running in South Florida. This was the best game of the night. Back will it come Walker. 40 seconds left. Heat need a stop here. Down to Courtney Lee. Another opportunity here. Three on the way. Got it! From downtown Courtney Lee. The Hornets lead 90-88. What a shot. The season from the beginning was just, uh, you know, it wasn't going our way. You know, it just had a lot too many distractions. Um, it just been like a, a bumpy road this entire season. So, you know, and obviously the series, they went two games at home. Uh, game three we win, and then game four that third quarter just really, you know, took the life out of us. Um, and then from the start of this game, it was just they were they were confident, they made shots, and we couldn't get a rhythm. And then uh, that's the game right there. We got to get better individually. Uh, up, upgrade our roster. Um, um, you know, we just got to get better. We got to improve. Guys got to improve, work on things that you, you're not really good at or you, you struggle with, and um, come back really confident for next year. Thoughts? Message. <laughs> we got to upgrade our roster. You know, uh, if, 
Well, the big decision is Dwight Howard's obviously going to leave there. He doesn't in that Georgia situation. But Jane Harden had, has to understand he's a terrific offensive player. But I'm not sure I would want to play with him uh, because it's not fun. Uh, you, you know, Kenny said something, and I 100% agree. When you play for the Golden State Warriors, you feel a part of the team. Like, everybody's moving because they're like, oh, I'm going to get the ball. Like the San Antonio vibe, it's too. Same thing with San Antonio. They're the two best teams. And Oklahoma City could be that good if they trusted each other more. But James Harden, he wouldn't be fun to play with because nobody wants, like, I, don't, I guarantee you, I wouldn't want to go to practice every day and just watch him dribble, dribble, dribble or come to the basket or step back and shoot a three. I mean, what, what am I standing out here for? And they can say they want to play small and shoot threes, but you can never get in rhythm. Trevor Ariza used to be one of the best three-point shooters in the NBA. Now, he's one of the, he, his, his stats say he's one of the worst, and I don't believe it. I just think he can never get in rhythm. Because when you get it, it's, it you, you just surprise you got it, and you can never get in rhythm in that situation. So he has to take a look in the mirror uh, and say, how can I get better? Because all players think it's always somebody else's fault. But when you're a great player, you have to look. You, your job is to make the lesser players better. That's what a great player does. Because you can always go out there and get 30 points a night. Like, when I played with certain guys, I would say, this guy can't get his own shot. I'm going to help him get his shot. I could have gone out and got 30 a night, and then, you know, that's the way it is. But my job as, as, the, as the best player on my team is to get other guys involved. Anything to add before we move on? Or have we talked Houston uh, we, out? Yeah, we can walk. We can walk. Yeah, move on. Good call. Uh, Hornets and Heat. Only game in the East tonight. Nick Batum back in there for uh, Charlotte. He would come off the bench Dang, in this one. And you know what, Ernie? That was really cool of him. Because I was surprised that they said he wanted to come off the bench. Hassan Whiteside inside. They're up eight. But then Kemba Walker pulls up, part of a 14-0 run for Buzz City. Charlotte played with a lot of confidence. Stop the ball, stop the nope. Jeremy Lin. Tell you what, their guards feel like they can get anywhere they want to against the Miami guards. They, they, you can just tell they're playing with so much confidence, it's unbelievable. Heat in transition. D Wade. Mm, good move, boy. Single roll. And then D Wade has still got this. Oh, that's a young D Wade right there. Flash. That's a 2006 D Wade. Thank you. Part of a 10 1 run. They're down 43 to 40. It was 49 47 at the half. And then Miami Ooh. led by five oh, after three. Great block. Mm. But you still, you know, they just show you they can get any shot they want anytime. Oh, bro. bro. That's a big name, Kenny, bro. Bro. Yeah, baby Ray Allen. <laughs> Ray Allen. Got you. <laughs> BRA, dummy. <laughs> bro. 78 77 game. Ooh. And Nick Batumu had no field goals through three. Lou all dang. The corner three. So Miami up a deuce. Then it's a one point game for the Heat, and D Wade bottoms that out. They're up by three. You just couldn't get a stop at the other end. Jeremy oh, Lynn, like toe on the line. 88 87. Just couldn't get a stop, Bernie. You thought that you thought that might be the difference in the game. What was that? This, that was a turnover. Courtney Lee, boy, he got ripped. Oh, 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 oh. This is the layup. You gotta dunk that. And people say, hey, I thought that was goaltending. I don't think D Wade touched no, it. No, it did not. Touch it. But then he oh, comes he back and see how oh, rebound. Oh. And then maybe sometimes, don't shoot it, don't show it. Yes, it goes. Shoot it. He was feeling it. 90 to 88. What's Miami going to do? I cannot believe this situation right here. These guys were passing the ball. Rogic has it blocked. Oh, that's so a foul. That's a foul. Can't come across the lane and claim you went straight up. Look where he come from. Thank you. That's a foul. He went straight up. He did not. He came from across the lane. Chuck, don't even try it. Don't you even try it. He came from across the lane. Do what? What you going to do? Now, that now Charlotte to inbound, and this ball gets tipped. You can't and, pass that ball. That's and there's D Wade with a foot out of bounds yeah, when he touched the ball. Throw that ball in that situation right there. That's too close in proximity. You can't do that. That ball's got to go away. So Hornets inbound again, and there's contact here, but it's two members of the Heat who collide. <laughs> and uh, Zeller says, we win. And the Hornets, who dropped the first two games in Miami, have won the next three. 
90 to 88 is the final, so they'll get a chance to go back to Charlotte and close this out when they play on Friday up there at the Time Warner Cable Arena. Uh, Marvin Williams had 17. Kemba Walker just four for 18 for his 14 points, but they win the game. They do hit 12 from beyond the arc for a playoff franchise record. Uh, so was it a foul? Was it not a foul? Here's D-Wade. Well, now I haven't looked at it. it don't, it's pointless now. There's no reason for me to look at it. Um, it ain't going to change anything. Um, I thought I did. Um, but it wasn't called. Did you have a chance to look at No, I did. I, I, don't, I don't need to. He got fouled. Look, it, it, it never is decided by those plays, but from my vantage point, uh, Dwayne certainly looked like he got fouled on, on the offensive rebound. Just wanted to help my team any way that I can, so I uh, crashed the glass, got the offensive rebound. I'm not sure who it was. I think it was Jeremy that passed the ball back to me. I was wide open, and I just let it fly. And so, I mean, if I if I had to draw it up, I'll, I'll take shooting one for eight before I knock down a big shot any day. And that's what people are going to see is the rebound and the three, but I'm talking about guarding Dwayne Wade and Joe Johnson, 40-something uh, minutes every single night and making plays on the offensive end. Um, I mean, that guy that guy has been nothing short of tremendous. He obviously is a terrific athlete and he's got good timing, but this one was the same place, really, as the one the other night. You know, look, he's made the two biggest plays of the last two games, and they've both been offensive rebounds. Uh, right now for us, uh, yes, it, it hurts uh, losing at home, but, uh, you know, welcome to the playoffs. The playoffs just started now. Being frustrated going to game six does you no good. But tonight, yeah, I mean, you know, my wife got to deal with me tonight. Yeah, no one else. Uh, I'm going to be pissed off all night until I go to sleep. Of course, like cold hard facts, I guess that was one of the cold hard facts from D Wade. And, and here's, Gabrielle, you get her on. here's yeah. more um, hotel rooms. I'm going to be pissed off all night. Remember, Charlotte, <laughs> fourth in the league in three pointers made this year. And only hit 16 of them in the first four games. They go for 12 in game five. And uh, here is uh, D's wife. If players, coaches, owners get fined for complaints about poor officiating, it makes sense that poor officiating equals fines for the refs. I mean, well, they the actually refs, do. Yeah, they are. Actually, I mean, they, they do. They are monitored fine. all the they time. Monitored all the time. But I don't know if that was a, uh, honestly, I don't know if that was a foul. It's a foul, man. You can't I, come I mean, across when the When I saw lane, it from the baseline angle. Listen, he came like from he across the lane. It wasn't a foul because he didn't it call it. Foul. You're uh, right. He didn't call it, but he came from across the lane. But if you look at, Hal just told me, their guards, they can't stop their guards from penetrating. Hal just told me, interesting, they've shot 60 free throws. They shot 59, so I'm going to round it up to 60. That's a lot of free throws for guys to get in a five-game series. I mean, they cannot – Jeremy Lin gets by them anytime he wants to. Kimber Walker, even if he didn't shoot a good percentage tonight, he gets a good shot every single time. Unless they found a way to control those guards – uh, Miami's in trouble. Yeah, I, th I thought the key to the game was Jeremy in the, in the sense that his ability to pass out of the penetration uh, and allow other guys to get going and get opportunities to score. That, I thought that was big throughout the game. Uh, you know, the way Wade, you know, played a great game in terms of he kept his team in it. But this is a – I would not be surprised if we we sitting here watching game seven uh, because these teams are that evenly matched. There is no clear uh, advantage – that is overriding. Yes, the advantage is the guard penetration, but then there's some advantages that Whiteside and Dwayne Wade have that are probably similar if they're having great nights. Yeah, I mean, it was, especially game four, very tight up there in Charlotte uh, where they'll play game six on Friday. But Courtney Lee, you, I mean, you talk about all those guys. You talk about Al Jefferson. You talk about Lynn and Walker. But Courtney Lee, how good does that pickup look now uh, mm -hmm. by, by the Charlotte Hornets to, I was add, ready to, say, to add him? And, and he's been huge in the last two games in moments. I was going to say you guys make interesting points. But if Miami would have retrieved the rebound that Courtney Lee retrieved and then kicked it back out and then got it back and hit the three, I think we'd be having a different conversation. I think they possibly win that game. They just got out hustle. And, you know, they... They shot the ball awful first half. We still need more out of white side. And the last play was a foul. But like you said, you know, no use complaining about it now. You know, the guards are killing them, like Chuck said. You know, they have to find a way to shut those guards down, but also go back at them. You know, Jerry, uh, Jeremy Lynch is playing offense out there. So whoever's guarding him, 
has to have the ability to go back at him, one make guy, him play some defense too. One guy we haven't mentioned who played fantastic night was Marvin Williams. Yeah, after a really bad yeah, start he, to this series. Yeah. No, but we haven't mentioned him. But he, his, he was. It, Batum hit a couple of big threes, but Marvin Williams played fantastic seven, tonight. Yeah, 17 points on seven of 10 shooting. Um, so they snap a nine-game postseason losing streak on the road and set themselves up for a clincher on Friday in Charlotte. Coming up next on Inside, we'll look ahead to the only game on the playoff schedule on Thursday. Hawks and Celtics, game six. For the Dunk King begins after game one of the Western Conference Finals on TNT. I promise you, I will be Dunk King. You know who had a birthday on Wednesday? Ice, Ice, Ice Man at 64. Oh, wow. One thing he can do, Ernie, is finger roll. roll. Hey, man, one of the nicest, well, obviously he's a great player, but one of the nicest Without men question. you're ever going to meet. Oh, it's Just always. Nice. A, oh, my goodness. It is oh. always a treat when you bump into him at no All-Star question. Weekend or somewhere. Uh, he's just the best. Man, yeah. I got some Look at that action. Still That's there. a crazy shot right now. Oh, tremendous. Maybe the greatest. Happy birthday, Ice. Too, maybe. Yep, it's yeah. right up there. Hawks and Celtics, only game in town on Thursday night. Hit the air at 8 o'clock here on TNT. Here's a look ahead from Kristen Letlow. Your team, no stranger to overcoming late game deficits, but I'm unable to do so in game five. What's going to be the key change defensively in game six? Uh, take the transition out of it. And that's, that starts with good shots on the offensive end and not turn the ball over. Once we, once we take care of that, we feel like we can guard them in the half court offense. And as you face elimination at the TD Guard, you're one of this team's leaders. What's your message to your teammates? You know, we're at home. We're going to protect home court, and that's what it's about. And um, well, we can't wait to get back to, to our home crowd and play in front of those guys. We've played good over there, um, not good enough to win. Uh, but I just feel like we just need to make sure that we stay consistent uh, throughout. Um, you know, I felt like we got a lead last time up there and just kind of they just came roaring back. Their crowd definitely gets into it. They're really rowdy. Um, I think we got to take them out of it somehow. You know, find a way to take the crowd off of because that's what they feed off of. A lot of pressure's on them. You know, we're, we're not going to put too much pressure on ourselves. Uh, we want this game bad. I think it's imperative that we go out there and try to get one. Um, worst case scenario, you know, we come back home for game seven. The health of Isaiah Thomas will be key to the Celtics' chances in game six. He combined for 70 points in their two wins. Brad Stevens said on Wednesday that Thomas showed improvement and he's confident their leader will take the floor on Thursday. I had tweaked my ankle in game in game four in the fourth quarter and I played through it. It made it a little worse and I, I, I did the same thing when I when I made that layup and it was just a sharp pain. I'll be all right. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely not sitting out and I'll do whatever it takes to play. Game six tomorrow night, right cheer, TNT. Yeah, I'm done to say. Back to wrap it up after this. Inside the NBA, presented by Kia, is brought to you by Kia, official automotive partner of the NBA. D-League finals, Jarnell Stokes. The old Tennessee Volunteer who played a couple of games for Memphis and three for Miami. Sioux Le Falls, I've been there, Ernie. Yeah, leading the Sioux Falls Sky Force to the win over the L.A. Defenders. Mm. Oh, good pass. Tennessee. Oh. He's going to get a contract next year. And I like that. Oh, Sioux Falls, Falls, congratulations. Oh, Dakota, man. Of the I tell you, one of my favorite places to play golf. Shout With out. Miami affiliate team. Yep, it is. Hey, it's that time. Another little, little coach. It's time for EJ's Me No Saddle Night. Presented by no one. Oh, my gosh. Unsullied we, uh, by sponsorship. Yes, it I is. Know. Yeah. Can't get one, huh? Oh, oh. Wow. You almost hit necktie. Uh, okay. We have some fish to do. Yes, we do. Let's have send them fishing. fishing. That's the boat is tired. We cranked him up at halftime. He only has some of it. Oh, no. Oh, I'm coming up, Hal. We, re we refueled it. Hey, Fire Marshal Bill, I like yeah. your hat. Okay, here you go, Shaq. Do your Fire Marshal Bill. <laughs> All right, hold on. Ready? Over here. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something about Houston. <laughs> One, two, three. 
Cancun. <laughs> hey, I, am, uh, I don't appreciate that. The, my uh, uh, look at Daryl Morey's yeah, T-shirt. The great J.J. Watt says uh, apology. Yeah, say. Apology accepted. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, America. That's funny. <laughs> Y'all get off my boy straight. Hal, I'm, <laughs> I'm coming up. Hal. Kenny. Kenny. Hal, I'm coming up. Kenny, what did you wear? I don't appreciate funny. that. I don't appreciate that. <laughs> Look at I do not appreciate uh, that. Hey, hey, not be, funny. Hey, Beyonce. Not funny. Oh, my God. Hey, you got to make a dish record. Uh, <laughs> Kenny, you smuggling them grapes? No, oh, man. I ain't oh, no. Come on, Kenny. Oh, what about <laughs> Hal, I'm coming up. <laughs> okay. That, uh, you're going to put a, oh, you're going to hurt something. Yeah, that's a wrap. Hopefully you don't. For Inside the NBA. Presented by Kia for Shaq. Why are you always telling them people? For Kenny. Know? For Chuck. <laughs> I'm calling him Ernie Johnson. I'm telling Remember, them Thursday night, one game, 8 o'clock, game six, be Hawks there, Celtics. There. I can do both. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Let me tell you something. <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>